we may be living in a hyper-disaggregated world. But against all odds, we found ways to compose ourselves in the pursuit of common and meaningful purposes. At Fungible, we are united in one mission, to bring to you revolutionary technology that will allow you to imagine new possibilities for a future that is fungible. Good morning, everyone. I am Pradeep Sindhu, CEO and co-founder of Fungible. I'd like to thank everybody for coming to our first systems product launch. I would like to begin by reminding everybody why we exist as a company. Our vision is to revolutionize data centers. We aspire to dramatically improve the agility, the security, the performance, the reliability, and the economics of data centers. This is a big challenge. We call the realization, the full realization of our vision a fungible data center. Today, we will introduce the fungible storage cluster, which takes a big step towards building a fungible data center. So it's helpful to begin with an industry perspective. The first giant step in computing took place in 1947 with a computer called the EDVAC. The EDVAC ushered in the era of programmable general purpose computers. Prior to this, computers were hardwired and very, very difficult to build to solve a particular application. The second step occurred when general purpose computers went to hyperconverged scale out computers. But this was at small scale. The third step was in the early 2000s when cloud native applications were built on top of massively scale out general purpose x86 based microprocessor servers. Today, we want to announce cloud native scale out fungible data centers. What is a fungible data center? It is a data center where compute, memory, and storage are disaggregated. Resources are organized in a small number of server types with each server type responsible for a specific resource and powered by the fungible DPU. Each server type is deployed in a scale-out manner consisting of many instances. And all server instances are connected over a high-performance true fabric that allow these resources to be composed dynamically and to execute practically any workload efficiently as well as at high performance. Now, a fungible data center is inherently multi-tenant because its resources can be dynamically partitioned into ultra-secure, bare metal, virtualized data centers. Fungible data centers address systemic inefficiencies in existing data centers stemming from the use of a compute-centric architecture, which doesn't work so well in a data-centric world. Specifically, fungible data centers will improve the agility of deployment, the security of infrastructure as well as of data, performance of data-centric workloads by anywhere between 10 times to 20 times. They will improve the reliability of network and storage dramatically. And finally, the economics of data centers by somewhere between a factor of three and a factor of 12. So how do we achieve all these properties? The key is a hyper-disaggregated architecture enabled by the fungible DPU. The fungible DPU solves two fundamental problems in today's data centers. The first one is to enable efficient execution of data-centric computations that are today performed inefficiently by general purpose CPUs. The second one is to enable highly efficient interactions between hyper-disaggregated nodes. Today, we're taking an important step towards realizing our goal of building fungible data centers. We are announcing our first fungible DPU-powered solution, the fungible storage cluster. This solution is a cloud-native, scale-out, secure, high-performance NVMe over fabric storage platform. 
The fungible storage cluster supports inline high performance data services enabled by the fungible DPU. These services include data durability, data reduction, and data security. They are enabled concurrently without any performance degradation. Over time, we will be adding additional services. The fungible storage cluster also supports pooling at massive scale, providing unparalleled economics through high utilization of storage. Finally, the fungible storage cluster scales linearly in performance, starting from 15 million IOPS in two rack units to 300 million IOPS in a single 40 rack unit and beyond to multiple racks. To complete our vision of fungible data centers, we need to power CPU servers, GPU servers, and hard drive servers using the fungible DPU. Stay tuned for announcements on these solutions. But for now, let me turn to my co-founder, Bertrand Serle, to discuss composability. Composability is a central concept in computer science. You compose atomic instructions into functions, and the functions into more functions, more capable functions, and that's how all software gets done. Now, for hardware, if you want to create a data center, you are going to add computers, thousands of computers, to get the scale-out effect that you want. Now, in order to add a computer, you first need to pick the configuration, how much disk it has, the RAM, and so forth. And then you need to order it, and then it gets delivered, and you need to install it. The whole process can take weeks. It's also not very flexible, because when your workload changes, you need to order different servers. So to address this lack of flexibility, people have been looking at virtualization. With a virtual machine, you can define the computer you'd like to have for your given workload. So that's good, but virtualization is implemented with a hypervisor that maps the low-level storage and networking calls into um, the bare metal um, networking and storage calls. And that translation process is fairly slow. So here comes the DPU to provide more flexibility. So this is how it works. For each CPU, you add a DPU, and the DPU is going to remap all the low-level calls in hardware. And because it's in hardware, it's super efficient. So let's look at an example with um, storage. Okay, the storage virtualization, the storage composition. So the CPU boots. When it boots, it tickles the DPU that's attached to it. The DPU talks to the control plane, and the control plane has a mapping that says for each CPU what boot image it should boot from. That boot image is transferred to the DPU, and the DPU gives the CPU the same boot image that the DPU would have had if the disk was attached. And now the boot can proceed on the DPU, the same thing happens with networking. So at the end of this process, for both storage and networking, the CPU thinks it has a certain set of NICs, a certain set of overlay, underlay, a certain set of volumes, as if all those things were directly connected to the CPU. In fact, all of them are proxied via the DPU. Now, because the DPU is totally programmable, we can compose GPUs, FPGA, it's all a small matter of programming for the DPU. Now, given your workload, you define what the composer should compose. All your resources are logically disaggregated. Your storage on one side, your servers on one side, your GPU on another side. You use a composer to provision for the workloads that you have. All those computers and those servers connected with the DPU get composed in just a matter of seconds. When you boot your server, its proper environment appears as you expect, with all the NICs it expects and all the storage and the volumes you expect. Not only we 
can compose storage and networking for your workload. But we can record this composition and create a recipe or a template that you can tweak later. There are many parameters you can tweak, but one of them is how many instances of your server you have. And so that means when your workload expands, you can just with one click reapply your recipe and you get your increased workload. Very, very easy to use. What are the benefits of this approach? The first major benefit is performance. All the composition is done by the DPU, is done in hardware, and the DPU offloads from your CPU. So you run at bare metal speed, no hypervisor in the way. The second benefit is that it's cheaper. Because you avoid the need to overprovision your servers, you get the benefits of pooling. It's cheaper because you have fewer SKUs. You don't need to have some big servers with a lot of disks and some little servers with little disks. No, you, you can just have a massive reduction in the number of SKUs. But the last big win is agility. You can rearrange the servers for your given workload in just a few minutes. This is to be compared to weeks in the traditional way where you roll in a new server in your data centers. So this is why composability is so important. And we believe all data centers will become fungible data centers enabled with DPUs and composition. Hi, my name is Benny Simontov, and I'm the Vice President of Product and Business Development at Fungible. We are excited to unveil the first of Fungible line of products, the Fungible Storage Cluster, or FSC in short. In industry-leading, very high-performance, scale-out, disaggregated, secure, all-flash storage cluster. With Moore's Law flattening and software being fundamentally bottlenecked by general-purpose server architectures, CPUs are unable to cope with large growth and storage requirements, including the ability to achieve high IOPS and throughput at low latencies, especially when you turn on data services like compression, encryption, and erasure coding. It has become increasingly clear that the solution for executing data-centric computation efficiently lies elsewhere. At Fungible, we believe that the market needs to address the general purpose CPU bottleneck at a more holistic level basically combining software innovations together with, with hardware innovations. This is exactly why we developed the Fungible Data Processing Unit, a new class of processor designed from the ground up to handle data-centric computations at extreme high performance and to enable efficient fabric interconnect across a large number of disaggregated nodes. Fungible has done to storage exactly what SDN did for networking. We completely separated the storage control plane from the storage data plane. The storage data plane running on scale-out storage nodes is called FS1600. The storage control plane, which run on three or more HA nodes, is called Fungible Composer. Let's take a look at the FS1600 first. The FS1600 was designed on the principle of scale-out architecture, where adding more nodes will increase the performance linearly. In fact, we can support up to thousands of nodes in a single data center. The FS1600 is a 19-inch wide, 2RU high storage node with 24 U.2 NVMe SSD and 800 gigabit per second of Ethernet bandwidth. It is powered by two F1 DPUs, which are running the entire storage, networking, and security stacks. And as a result, the FS1600 achieves extremely high performance at DAS-like latency. For example, a single FS1600 can achieve over 15 million IOPS of 4 kilobyte random read, which is more than 80% of the theoretical SSD capacity in the box. 15 million IOPS translate into 60 gigabyte per second of throughput. This is an average 5 to 10 times higher than any other x86-based storage array. Another key benefit of the FS1600 is its ability to turn on inline data services like compression, encryption, and erasure coding without impacting performance of the node. 
This is typically not the case with CPU-based storage nodes. The FS1600 currently supports block storage with NVMe over TCP and NVMe over TrueFabric. We add about 10 microseconds of additional latency over DAS, which is unnoticeable by the high-level applications. The disaggregation, however, gives us the full benefit of independent scaling of compute and storage. Fungible true fabric enabled by the Fabric Control Protocol further allows us to create a large scale of FS1600 with a reliable end-to-end -end quality of service and much lower latencies compared to other protocols. The high performance and low latency makes remote SSD appear like local SSDs even at a very large scale of deployment. In fact, the FS1600 is the only high performance storage solution available today that supports network erasure coding as compared to 3x replications. Fungible achieves data durability by implementing a flexible erasure coding algorithm across multiple nodes over the network. We support all the way from 2,1 to 32,8 configurations. Distributing the FS1600 nodes across different racks enhances reliability as our EC implementation allow the FSC to recover from multiple system failures, even in the case of power loss to the entire rack. Another benefit is that our customers can now implement EC for hot data at high performance and low latencies. Up until now, EC is typically only implemented for cold data. Let me summarize the benefits to our customers. Well, first, FS1600 delivers the highest performance density in the market, which is about 5 to 10x higher than any existing x86-based storage platform. Performance scales linearly when adding additional nodes. Secondly, our customers should see 3x lower TCO and footprint compared to current deployments. The TCO benefits come from inland compression ratios that are comparable to Google broadly, but runs about 100 times faster, lower overhead from network EC compared to 3x replications, and pooling of stranded SSD resources increasing media utilization. Thirdly, the FSC supports some additional advanced storage services like multi-tenancy for cloud environment, encryption addressed and in motion with per volume key, per volume quality of service with mean max IOPS, snapshots, clones, striping, as well as additional advanced storage services. The FS1600, powered by the fungible DPU, enable hyper-disaggregation of data center infrastructure. Let me now turn over to my colleague, Srini, to talk about how the cluster FS1600 is managed by the fungible composer. Thank you, Benny. Hello, I'm Srinidhi Vardarajan, the SVP of solutions at Fungible. It's my pleasure to introduce the other half of the Fungible Storage Cluster, the control software known as Fungible Composer. The Fungible Composer is a centralized management solution that's developed to configure, manage, orchestrate, control, and deploy the FS1600 cluster. It operates on a control plane that is distinctly separate from the data plane. The Composer itself runs on a three-node, self-contained quorum-based cluster for scalability and high availability. The core architecture is cloud native. It consists of stateless services with all the state confined to fully replicated databases and messaging services. We use internal load balancers to steer control plane load across service instances. And this ensures a smooth operation under data center scale load. Fungible Composer consists of five services, storage service, a network management service, a telemetry service, a node management service that's responsible for log collection, and finally, an API gateway that provides external access to the services that are hosted by the Fungible Composer. What is unique about our data center scale storage system design is the separation of the control plane from the data path. This enables the data path to be really simple and thus robust to a variety of failure conditions that you run across in a data center. I mean, this is what you really want, moving complexity out of the critical data path and into the control plane. The storage service in Fungible Composer is responsible for creating and managing storage volumes and enabling storage capabilities along four axes, data durability, data security, data reduction, and performance isolation. Users of the FS1600 
can easily select the data durability scheme all the way from raw volumes with no durability, basically ephemeral storage, to erasure coded or replicated volumes with configurable protection to recover from an arbitrary number of failures. All of this on a per volume basis. Data security is provided by seamless volume encryption with per volume encryption keys and support for centralized key management via KMIP. For data reduction, the storage service provides a variety of selectable compression algorithms and data deduplication, again, on a per volume granularity. Finally, performance isolation is guaranteed by per volume quality of service support. If you notice, I keep harping on per volume basis. This is because unlike other storage arrays that create siloed combinations of durability, security, data reduction, and performance isolation, and force all data volumes to belong to either one or the other of these combinations, the fungible storage cluster truly enables each volume to be independently configured along all four axes. This is what provides the customization that is needed for multi-tenant data centers. Ease of setup is particularly important when you're talking of a scale-out storage cluster that operates at data center scale. And this is where the network service in the Fungible Composer comes in. The network service automatically detects an attached FS1600 node, and it uses zero-touch provisioning to add it to a fungible storage cluster. Cluster expansion is now a seamless operation. The telemetry service provides a sophisticated data gathering and distribution engine for telemetry data and for metrics that are gathered from fungible DPUs within FS1600s. To access the vast amount of telemetry data that comes out of DPUs, the telemetry service uses a subscription model. Once you have subscribed to a metric, data points are periodically uploaded from the DPUs to the telemetry service, and you can query these metrics. Data from the telemetry service also monitors the health of the fungible storage cluster as a whole. And this provides the insight that's necessary for initiating failure recovery under software, server, storage, or network failures. Because of its performance, scale, and granular configurability, the fungible storage cluster is particularly well-suited for high-performance data center scale operations. Major use cases here include parallel file systems, high-performance databases, elastic block storage across AI and machine learning use cases, analytics. We hope you are ready to enter a new era of hyper-disaggregated storage that provides performance, power, and cost efficiencies that have historically been enjoyed only by hyperscalers. This is not your grandma's attic. Congratulations on the launch of the Fungible Storage Cluster. We're excited to have Fungible join the IBM Partner Network and further the reach of IBM Spectrum Scale. The Fungible Storage Cluster comes at an opportune time to serve an industry that's clamoring not just to optimize performance and maximize performance, but to turn performance density into much better footprint and cost efficiencies. Congratulations to the Fungible team. At TechData, we are looking forward to jointly bringing the market the fungible storage cluster to customers with extremely stringent performance and efficiency requirements. Our partners are excited to bring new technologies to market, and we look forward to winning together. Good morning, delighted to be here. Rarely have I been more excited in my three decade storage career to discuss a breakthrough new storage product, the fungible storage cluster. So let's begin by discussing the customer requirements that drove the design of the fungible storage cluster. There are six key requirements that customers told us about. First, performance, both high IOPS and low latency. Second, low cost, including reliability, very high reliability at low cost. Third, as the security threats are accelerating, security is a paramount requirement of our customers. 
Number four, we're dealing with scale-out cloud data centers. And therefore, the storage also needs to be scale-out and to be able to handle tens of petabytes of data in a data center. And the way failures need to be handled are also consistent with the way scale-out systems must handle failures. Number five, multi-tenancy. Very important because our customers will have multiple tenants within a data center, and we need to be able to protect one tenant from another, both in a security sense by keeping them apart, and also in a performance sense to make sure that no one tenant is disturbing the performance of another tenant. And finally, ease of use is critical, both during deployment of the storage cluster and during ongoing operations which need to be automated. So why is the fungible storage cluster better than existing solutions at meeting these six requirements? Let's take them one at a time. Performance. The fungible DPU was specifically designed to execute data-centric workloads. And the storage stack is a perfect example of such a workload. We will be 10 times better than general purpose CPUs on such workloads. Furthermore, the true fabric enables very low average and tail latencies, which are important to our customers. In fact, we'll show you later that even going over the network, our remote storage performance can be equal to, and in some cases even better, than the performance of local storage. To achieve low cost, we do three things. Uh, first, the DPU has world-class compression capability built into the DPU, and it's better or as good as the best compression in the world, widely known to be Google's Broadly. Secondly, we do cross-node erasure coding. Now, this is important because a lot of people, when they think about erasure coding, they think about erasure coding within a storage node of a bunch of SSDs to protect against SSD failures. Our EC, very importantly, is cross-node. Few people do this. Most people replicate across nodes. And there's a big difference in cost between erasure coding across nodes and replicating across nodes. Finally, we do cross data center pooling. Our fungible DPU and true fabric enables us to create a storage cluster that can be shared across thousands of racks. This is different from what people are doing today, which is disaggregating within a few racks. Next, let's discuss security. As we know, current systems are limited by the speed of the CPU. The DPU, on the other hand, we're able to do encryption at line rate, both in motion and at rest. Next, we're going to discuss massive scale. The true fabric and the DPU enables massive scale, the ability to scale to tens of petabytes in a data center. Furthermore, as you will see, we have an architecture that cleanly separates the data plane and the control plane, something we've learned from the networking world. This is also critical to great scaling for the fungible storage cluster. Multi-tenancy is very important. And what we do with the DPU is we enable per volume, quality of service, compression, data protection, and encryption keys. This is in contrast to today's storage systems that often provide a single level of durability for all data. We're very granular in what we do. Finally, let's discuss ease of use and why the DPU and the fungible storage cluster is differentiated with ease of use. Because of the networking DNA in the company, we do something called zero touch provisioning not usually done in storage systems. This makes it very easy to deploy. Secondly, we make all placement decisions with respect to where a volume goes, even when there are tens of nodes or even hundreds of nodes of storage. In a data center with many such nodes, without our solution, the customers typically have to remember which box or which node has their data. We completely absolve the customer from that responsibility. Now let's get into performance, which is one of the key requirements, as you know. Let's begin with the top right table. 
we're showing two numbers similar to what other cloud providers do because they offer two kinds of storage, ephemeral storage and durable storage. Our number for ephemeral storage on a per node basis is 15 million IOPS. Our number for durable storage is approximately 9 million IOPS when I'm cross-node protected. Just a few years ago, you know, I was personally building a storage system based on general purpose CPUs, and we were struggling to achieve even 1 million IOPS. So these numbers, 15 million, 9 million, these numbers are simply astounding. Furthermore, we are measuring in the lab that the fungible storage cluster scales very linearly. So for example, if I had seven nodes, we can offer greater than 100 million IOPS of raw performance. Now, how good is our durable performance? Let's look at the bottom table. The bottom table shows you how good we are compared to other scale-out storage competitors. There aren't very many other storage scale-out competitors out there, so we picked for comparison Ceph, which is deployed by a few cloud service providers, and because it is known to be scale-out. And we also picked for comparison another recent entrance, which is about the closest competitor we could find. The first two rows are about IOPS. The next two rows are about latency. So as you can see from the first two rows, we are about 18 times better than Ceph with read and write IOPS and we are approximately three times faster uh, on read and write IOPS than our closest competitor. Maybe two to three X for writes, three X for reads. And on latencies, as you can see, again, compared to Ceph, we're about 15 X faster. On reads, maybe 30 X faster on write latencies. And compared to our nearest competitor on read latency, while they're approaching 170 microseconds, we can get below 170 microseconds all the way up to 4.5 million IOPS compared to their 3 million IOPS. All of these results actually assume TCP. We measured with TCP. We didn't measure it with True Fabric. As you know, uh, the performance is going to be even better for us once we take these measurements with True Fabric. Other than performance, customers also care about low cost, high reliability, high security, and ease of use. Now, let's talk about why the fungible storage cluster is cost efficient. Number one, we have superior compression. Our compression is as good as the best in the world, widely thought to be Google's Broccoli. Second, we have extremely low overhead durability. As we said, we do cross-node erasure coding, 12 plus 3 erasure coding, has only 25% overhead. When people do three-way replication, there is 200% overhead. That makes a big difference. Thirdly, because encryption is built into the DPU, we can do encryption without expensive self-encrypting drives. And finally, because we have such high performance in a single node, we can support the needs of a large number of customers in a very small footprint by doing 15 million IOPS, we can do in a single node what someone else that does 3 million IOPS per node would require five nodes to achieve the same level of performance so we can be significantly cheaper as a result. Now let's talk about why we have cost efficient reliability. Look at the table in the middle of the chart and you'll see that the top two rows are two and three way replication rows. The next three rows are various erasure coded configurations. The middle column is the cost of achieving the given reliability, lower is better. And the last column is the probability of data loss. Once again, lower is of course better. As you can see, 12 plus three erasure coding is almost five orders of magnitude better reliability than three-way replication. Notice that the cross-node EC has the lowest cost and the best reliability. So you can have the best of both worlds. Furthermore, our performance with razor coding is superior to the performance that other competitors have 
using the more expensive replication. So we really are better in actually three dimensions here. Now, let me explain to you why the fungible storage cluster is highly secure. Again, there are four reasons. Number one, we're able to encrypt at line rate at 800 gigabits per second, almost a terabit per second. We have per tenant keys, which can be stored in the secure enclave inside the DPU. Every customer can get their own key, and we only allow signed code to execute in the DPU using our secure boot protocol. Let's now switch gears to ease of use. FSC achieves ease of use by allowing for automated management using a single REST API, which can be used to manage tens of petabytes of data in a data center. We've been talking to customers, and of course, one of our largest customers found this a very compelling proposition because of the extremely low OPEX and the ability to manage and automate all of this from their orchestration system. They loved that about our product. When we create a volume, we decide where it goes in the system. Even though there may be 100 nodes in the system, we decide where it goes. Customers don't have to remember where the volume is placed. Furthermore, all the alerts and notifications from our system are presented in a standard way to cloud orchestration systems, allowing them to automate all of these failures. And this automation drives down the OPEX. Ease of use is further enhanced by the fact that the customer does not need to manage multiple data silos because we can support diverse kinds of data in a single store. In the example on the bottom of the chart, we show three different customers all storing their data on the same fungible storage cluster with different encryption keys, different durability requirements, different compression requirements, and each of them has their own performance SLA, which we guarantee. And this is all handled within a single storage cluster. The ability to consolidate workloads and simplify the infrastructure drives OPEX down further because the customer doesn't need multiple silos. We're going to now turn and discuss some use cases for the fungible storage cluster. We're going to begin with the disaggregated scale out cloud storage use case. This is the use case, the canonical use case, that drove the design of the product. And we've already shared with you why we are the best at satisfying the six key requirements that scale out cloud customers have for this use case. So I'm not going to belabor that point. But I'm going to show you a little performance data comparing our performance for scale out disaggregated storage to that of the public cloud vendors. And we're going to take a look at per volume performance results because this is easily found on the public cloud provider's website. So what we're going to show here in this use case is that we're better than the public cloud providers who have their own scale out storage, except those are proprietary implementations. As you know, our own implementation uses a standard NVMe or Fabric implementation. The performance numbers for Google Cloud and for AWS, as I mentioned, come directly from their website. Our performance is actually measured in our own fungible labs, and several customers have done these performance measurements, and they all match. As you can see here, we're actually better by anywhere from a factor of three or four over these proprietary solutions from the public cloud providers, even though we're using a completely open standard implementation. In fact, I can share with you that one of our customers specifically moved from the public cloud to a private cloud, used our fungible storage cluster, and they told us that we are 4x better compared to what they were experiencing on the public cloud. The second use case I want to share with you today is with IBM Spectrum Scale or GPFS. This, as you know, is one of the premier scale out file systems in the world. IBM Spectrum Scale is used in many applications, many verticals, such as high performance computing, AI and machine learning, big data analytics, and private cloud. And it's used across many industries, 
like banking, insurance, media, defense, telco, life sciences. It's a very mature product used in many, many places. There are three key advantages of using the fungible storage cluster as the storage for GPFS as shown in the chart. First, you get very high IOPS for small block workloads. GPFS has typically been very good at large block workloads, and we get very high performance, up to 87 million IOPS per petabyte. In fact, the target we were given to beat was 10 million IOPS per petabyte, and we beat it handily. The second advantage of using fungible storage cluster with GPFS is lower cost because we reduce the loader burden on the application nodes because we offload compression and encryption into our DPU. Thirdly, as we've already shared with you, we do cross storage node EC, which enhances reliability while driving down cost at the same time. This bar graph shows us the performance of GPFS running on fungible storage cluster. As you can see, we achieve almost 10 million random read IOPS with 12 hosts running GPFS, driving to just two cluster nodes, just two FSC nodes. We can extrapolate that and we can see, therefore, that we expect to be able to get 30 million IOPS with just six FSC nodes. Very powerful performance. Finally, let's talk about the third use case. This is for scale out databases where we replace direct attached storage with scale out FSC storage. We see four advantages. First, you get better performance, as we will show in the next chart, both better throughput and lower latency. We also can get you lower cost by using FSC because there are no stranded resources with the direct attached storage. Furthermore, we can reduce load because of the offloaded compression. We also offer better ease of use because we can do centralized data management. And then finally, we offer better security because of the use of per-tenant keys. Here, we show the performance of using the fungible storage cluster versus direct attached storage for a NoSQL database, specifically for Cassandra. These results assume a 95.5, that is 95% read, 5% write workload, and we are using the Yahoo Cloud Serving benchmark for these results. In the case of DAS, we assume that compression is enabled in Cassandra. And for fungible storage cluster, we enable compression on the fungible storage cluster itself using our DPU and turn off compression in Cassandra. We show four charts for latency measurements. These are read and write latencies, and also average and tail latencies. The gray represent DAS in these charts. The blue graphs represents the fungible storage cluster. Lower is better. As you can see, FSC provides uniformly better latencies. Finally, on the left, we show a fifth chart, and this shows transactions per second. Of course, here, higher is better. And as you can see, FSC provides superior transactions per second as well. So both latency and transactions per second are better. Clearly, these are very impressive results, given that we're going over the network to get to the fungible storage cluster compared to storage that is local with local DAS. Finally, let me conclude. I hope by now I have convinced you that the fungible storage cluster is a breakthrough storage platform. Most of the differentiation comes from the use of the fungible DPU and the associated software stack that was co-designed with the fungible DPU to drive these amazing levels of performance. As I showed you through the presentation, we meet the six key customer requirements of high performance, low cost, security, reliability, multi-tenancy, and ease of use better than any other storage system. We also took you through three very compelling use cases. Scale out cloud, 
IBM Spectrum Scale or GPFS and various scale out databases. I hope I have really intrigued you enough about the fungible storage cluster and I really look forward to your questions. This marks the end of all of our presentations and we're now going to turn over to the live Q&A. Thank you so much. A huge congrats to the Fungible team. The SoftBank team joins you in celebrating this remarkable milestone. In a post Moore's law world, where our infrastructure cannot keep pace with exponentially growing workload demands, we are counting on your differentiated DPU systems to usher in the era of high performance, composable infrastructure at the core and the edge. Congrats again, Fungible. Congratulations to the Fungible team for hitting such an important milestone. As fans of the Fungible DPU, we are excited to see its first incarnation in a storage platform. With its first product, we are looking forward to seeing the Fungible storage platform make a dent in the next generation infrastructure space. Congrats to Pradeep, Bertram and the whole Fungible team on the recent launch. Fungible Data Processing Unit, or DPU, is a transformational technology, and it's great to see its value and benefits translate to a storage use case. We're looking forward to tremendous success for Fungible DPU in many storage use cases across many customers. Congrats again, team. Congratulations to the Fungible team for the successful launch of the Fungible Storage Cluster. I look forward to many more Fungible DPU-powered platforms in the future. Hey, big congratulations, Team Fungible. This launch marks an important milestone for the company. We are thrilled to see the innovations in Fungible Labs delivered as tangible value into the hands of customers. And we wish you every success in building technology and market leadership in the industry. 